I'm in central Panama. I'm heading up to a tree house in the canopy of this jungle to do some birding. This is going to be great. It's going to be really cool. But you know what? Before I head up there to go birding, I think I need a dip to cool off. Let's go birding! Now is the time of your life. Oh, now is the time it's a sweet ride to the end of the line. Now is the time it's a great time to come alive. Now is the time of your life. Oh, now is the time. And this is the perfect habitat for this bird. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome! That's our golden bird. Approximately 18 different species of woodpecker have been recorded in Panama. This week's search centers around the woodpecker species of Panama, but in particular, our golden bird, the striped-cheeked woodpecker. Within 20 minutes from this time, we will have this vessel moving into the upper arch chain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Panama Canal. Let's go birding. Three million years ago, the last natural connection between the world's two greatest oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific, was closed due to major geological activity. This geological phenomenon created the Isthmus of Panama, a land bridge between North and South America. And this is the way that Panama remained up until about a hundred years ago, when one of the world's engineering marvels was born, the Panama Canal. I'm standing at one of the 350 meter long locks that will deliver this huge super tanker from Miraflores Lake down to the Pacific Ocean. I'm not one to get too excited by engineering projects, but to go down to the Miraflores Lock and watch these incredible, huge super tankers being delivered down to the Pacific Ocean was really astounding. Each one of these 350 meter long locks will contain 65 million gallons of water. And with each transfer of a ship, 52 million gallons of water will flow into the Pacific Ocean or into the Atlantic Ocean, depending on which way the traffic is going. The Panama Canal and the rainforest have actually learned to coexist. This is all protected land on both sides of this canal. And one of the primary reasons for that is the Panama Canal depends upon this watershed. And for that reason, the government of Panama have protected all the land on this side and all the land on the northern side, which is Sibirania National Park. As the water gets transferred from the freshwater lake into the locks, all the fish get congregated in a small area. And this attracts a variety of seabirds. We've got brown pelicans here, laughing gulls, and magnificent frigate birds, all taking advantage of the bounty of freshwater fish that are trapped in the lock. The engineering ingenuity of this feat cannot be underestimated, and neither can the wildlife and birding of this beautiful country. Let's go birding. We've just climbed 175 steps up into the rainforest canopy. This is the Panama Rainforest Discovery Center Tower, and we're looking right over the canopy of primary rainforest here. Coming down from the tower, we were met by Carlos' good friend, Nestor Correa from the APPC, an organization doing vital work rescuing and relocating animals from the new expansion of the Panama Canal. Mainly our uh, primary mission is wildlife rescue in the Panama Canal area and Panama City area. 
Animals are being relocated mainly in protected areas and sometimes in continuous forests around the canal that are going to be protected forever by law. We are working right now in more than 95 hectares of secondary forest and so many animals we have today are coming from that area. Others are coming from city rescues and others are coming from the canal expansion. This is a two-toed slot. We're gonna release this guy. They're quite, they're a little bit more aggressive than, a little bit more aggressive than the three-toed slot. And we're gonna put him on a tree over here and release him. There he goes. You see him holding on? Let's let him go. Goodbye, buddy. Enjoy your new life. What we do is we try to rescue just slow animals, animals that are not able to escape from the heavy equipment or machinery that is put in the trees. And so far, we rescue more than 600 animals, mainly mammals and reptiles. We're here with Jose Luis Ortega from the Pan American Association for Conservation. These guys are doing amazing work rescuing animals from the expansion of the Panama Canal. And here we've got a Central American woolly opossum that Jose is going to release. A bit hesitant to come out right now. There he goes. That's one more Central American woolly opossum that's been saved from certain death. This is the Bay of Panama behind me over here. We're on our way to Canopy Tower to meet with our guide, Carlos Bethencourt. But the Bay of Panama is a critical site for migratory shorebirds. And Panama Audubon have been doing very, very important work on the study of this particular site for migratory shorebirds. Most of the work that we do is related to the conservation of the Bay of Panama, one of the most important sites in the hemisphere for migratory shorebirds. The Bay of Panama is very important for migratory shorebirds because studies done in the late 90s show that more than one to two million shorebirds are coming through Panama and they mostly are using the Bay of Panama for feeding, for staying a couple of weeks here and then later on they continue their journey to South America. So the mud flats are so rich and we have like several kilometers of mud flats being exposed every time that we have a low tide. So that allows them to be in a wonderful place for eating and for feeling protected. We have been promoting the importance of the Bay of Panama among the citizens of Panama City. Many people don't even know that this is such an important place. So it's not just about birds, it's about how these areas are helping us. So part of the work that we have been doing is just letting people know that we have to protect them, we have to care them because in a way they are protecting us. Panama City is almost like three cities rolled into one with pre-colonial influences, colonial influences and modern influences. It's incredible to think that just 45 minutes from this bustling metropolis is a haven of wildlife all around us and in fact even in some of the suburban areas of Panama City the inhabitants of the city share their neighborhoods with sloths, monkeys and a whole host of different bird species. After viewing the shorebirds of Panama Bay we headed off to Canopy Tower Lodge situated a mere 30 minutes drive from the center of Panama City. There we were met by my good friend Carlos Bethencourt and also got to meet the owner of Canopy Tower, Raul Arias. Well, Canopy Tower is very special for birds for three very simple reasons, very important reasons. One is we are above the canopy, so we can see birds that inhabit the canopy, the Greek green shrike vireo, blue cotinga. Second, because we are within a national park, Parque Nacional Soberania, 60,000 acres of great forest and third we are only 45 minutes from the international airport so you can come and be here 
in 45 minutes after you land. Panama is an amazing birding destination because we are only two and a half hours from Miami. We have about a thousand bird species. That's about 120 more than Costa Rica. So we have more birds than Costa Rica and a lot less bird watchers. And the proximity of the birding spots to the lodge and the variety of habitat. You can go from lowland to cloud forest in an hour. And in between you have transitional forests, you have marshes, you have uh, lakes, you have primary forests. So that variety of habitats, proximity to the U.S., a number of species, and it's easy to see them because there are lots of, of birds around. After a quick refreshment and a quick shower, Carlos took us out on a thrilling night drive in the area. And on this night drive, we got to experience some of the great mammals that can be spotted during the evening. The Panamanian jungle at night. We're heading out with a spotlight, looking for some of the nocturnal mammals to be found in the area. Mammals like kinkadoos or lingers. Possibly, if we're very lucky, we may even find one of the arboreal species of tree porcupine. This is going to be a treat. Let's go. This is one of the most amazing things is to be out at night. Night drive is one of the most difficult things, but you got to be out to try. Otherwise, you don't know what you're missing. Got a sloth sleeping up on a branch, horizontal branch. It's a two-toed sloth. There, right there, Rochelle like porcupine. Oh, this is so cool. This is great. Carlos has just spotted us an arboreal species of porcupine endemic to Panama called the Rothschild porcupine. How cool is the sighting, man? Yeah, this is a very, very hard mammal to find, especially because it's nocturnal. And, you know, it's a, it's a, a feed on membrillos, which is the Gustavia superba, the plant that we're looking at right now. So when these plants are flowering, there's high chances that you can find porcupine, a sloth, opossum, night monkeys in this type of trees. Because it's a really good sighting. We don't get to see this mammal very often. So it's really cool. Rothschild's porcupine. It's believed that there may be a population of this porcupine existing in Colombia, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. And until it is confirmed, that is an endemic species of arboreal porcupine right here in the Panamanian jungle at night. Within five seconds in exactly the same tree, we've just come across an olingo and a kinkadu. Carlos, tell us a little bit about these mammals. The kinkajou can sound like a woman yelling at night. Sometimes you hear this. That's cool. <laughs>
It really does look as if it's been dusted by the old cinnamon spice jar. Similar in habits to the woodpeckers is a family of birds called the wood creepers. They get their name from the way that they creep up trees to forage in the bark for insects. The wood creepers are a family of birds that are endemic to the neotropics and they all look very, very similar, except for this uncommon and very beautiful black striped wood creeper. This is probably the most beautiful of all the wood creepers with beautiful white spots on a black and brown back. Look at him climbing up the tree, looking for insects under the bark. Stunning bird. Without a doubt, the toughest bird on our entire trip was the endemic striped-cheeked woodpecker. A beautiful species of woodpecker that was hence unknown from this side of the Panama Canal. The striped-cheeked woodpecker is normally found in the eastern part of Panama and was only recently discovered in the area that we were looking for it. On the trail, looking for this woodpecker, we came across one of the weirdest looking primates I think I've ever seen in my life. And also, this sighting, Carlos tells me, is very rare. Now we've come across some really cool primates on this trip to Panama. We've seen howler monkeys, capuchin monkeys, and Jeff Roy's tamarin. But this late afternoon, on our way looking for the striped-cheeked woodpecker, we came across probably the coolest primate of them all, a western night monkey, or owl monkey. These little monkeys hide up in trees during the day and come out late afternoon in the evenings to hunt. The night monkeys are the only truly nocturnal family of monkeys. You can see with their big brown eyes how they have this increased ability to be active at night. They're part of a monotypic family called Aotidia, and the word Aotis actually means earless. They do have ears, of course, but the external ears are very tiny and hard to see. But look at their bright brown eyes, look at their almost earless appearance. Aren't these little stunners sitting at the top of this tree here? Mainly active at night, the beautiful and spectacular night monkeys. An interesting thing that I learned about night monkeys is that they're actually one of the few species of primates that are affected by the malarial protozoan in the same way that humans are affected. And for this reason, they're pretty important in research for finding out how malaria affects humans. Still no luck with the striped-cheeked woodpecker. We've heard one calling, but haven't been able to get good views at all. There's basically two sites for this woodpecker. One right here, and they like to frequent these sort of old growth trees and there's also a couple of conifers further up the path that we're going to try our luck with. We're going to leave Jeffrey, our cameraman, with Moyo, and I'm going to head up with Carlos and see if we can try for the birds further up the path. Should we try that, Carlos? Let's, Let's go. go. Let's okay. go. The first time I got to see a striped chick woodpecker was in the eastern side of Panama. I was so excited to get this bird because it's an endemic bird and so special to see that with a group of friends of mine. So that was our unique experience. Every time you see endemic, it's just your heartbeat rate goes high because of the excitement of seeing a new bird. Guys, we've got the woodpecker. Carlos has got the woodpecker. Come, come, follow me. Let's be a little bit quiet though, a little bit quiet. He's up the hill. He's covered by leaves. He's right covered by Jeff, come. Leaves. Get the other camera. Get the camera on him. Okay, good, 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 good. I'll never forget the search for the striped-cheeked woodpecker. We were all over the show. We had our cameraman at one section down the path. Carlos and I were at another section on the path. There was pandemonium when Carlos eventually found the bird. I had to run back down, get Jeff, our cameraman, haul him back up to see the bird. And thank goodness, Carlos had the foresight to get footage of the bird with his digital camera through my spotting scope. Yes, striped cheek woodpecker, we finally got it. That was amazing, well played. Excellent. I like that, Carlos. Unfortunately, we didn't get our cameraman onto it, but Carlos thinks he's got some great footage through our Zeiss telescope with a digital camera. So we're gonna have a look and see how that footage comes out. But this is a striped cheek woodpecker, 
the most uncommon woodpecker in the whole of Panama. It used to be considered a subspecies of white-throated woodpecker along with rufous-winged woodpecker, but it's now been given full status due to differences in its call and also in its spatial patterning. Awesome, striped cheek woodpecker, our golden bird. I'm sweating, but I'm happy. Thanks, Carlos. All right. Awesome.